Well, this past week at Daily Reset on July the 9th, Bungie dropped some juju into the Destiny 2 world that bad. Juju. For those of you who hadn't played Destiny 1, this is a new exotic pulse rifle. I did not play Destiny 1. Well, I did a little bit, but I never had this gun, and so it was new to me, new to some, old to others, but nonetheless, we got a brand new toy, and I want to jump in and talk about how this was done. I thought the quest was pretty interesting. There was some shenanigans involved, but overall, I thought it was a pretty decent quest, but let's talk about why. Folks, welcome back to the channel. I am the Coltrane, and as you know, it is my express desire to bring you joy in all the content that I create. Let's talk about this bad, bad juju. All right, so the mission itself. Going to the Leviathan via the Ascendant Realm, I thought was pretty cool. What I especially loved was the fact that Bungie took many of the encounter spaces from the original Leviathan raid and included those into this mission. I really liked this, especially for folks who maybe have never completed the Leviathan raid before. We know a lot of people just don't raid, so there's probably a lot of people who that was the first time getting a good idea other than the Menagerie what the Leviathan was all about circa year one. So I really, really enjoyed that a lot. I thought Bungie did a great job making the place just look all kind of freaky with the big callus, uh, hanging dolls, which if that was your first time through, I'm sure that was a bit of a surprise to see that. Um, but I thought Bungie just did a great job creating a visceral feel of what the Leviathan would be like in the Ascendant Realm. I also really love the lore implications this has. I'm not super well educated on what the bad juju exactly is, but I know it's related to Tolan the Shattered, and I think this was a gun that he created. Anyway, I know the normal lore folks like Bife and Mylan and some others will probably be all over this in the coming days and weeks. I'm really excited to hear their take on it, but I really appreciated that Bungie really tied some pretty meaningful lore into a character that has been a part of Destiny for quite a while. really thought that was cool. And I also loved coming up on non-Taken enemies in the Ascendant Realm battling Taken enemies right there at the very end. I thought that was really neat. In fact, the first time that I played the mission, this one poor Cabal soldier somehow got just yeeted across the space and just fell to his death. I didn't record it. I wish I would have. It was hilarious. Just running up there and then suddenly seeing this poor soldier just go crane off the edge. Maybe that happened for everybody, but I thought that was pretty funny. What I also love overall about this quest is the low barrier to entry. This is very much a hand-me-out exotic that Bungie has given to all the players, and I think this is pretty good all in all. Exotic weapons, I think, sometimes should be something that only some players can obtain because of the content just being either the highest of the high tiers or just being so exclusive that only a small number of people are going to be able to achieve it because of RNG or whatever task. But with that said, I think it's also very good that they come through and they just give us something every now and again, and that was definitely this. So much so because the mission could have totally been soloed. I really like that a lot, and I really appreciate that Bungie every so often does this, and that it's with an exotic that doesn't feel worthless, right? Like this could be a solid, solid PvE weapon, and maybe PvP, depending on your build and class and some different things that you use with it. So I really love that a lot. I also love the fact that this really fosters some unity within the community. Anytime a brand new toy gets shoved into Destiny, it's always fun being a part of the conversations that are had going and getting said new toy. And the fact that everybody can go and get this means nobody is left out unless you just weren't able to go play the game to get it. But that's just the thing. While anybody can go and get it, and while the initial impression that it does have a low barrier to entry, in some ways it kind of doesn't. Let me explain. So the whole going to the Visage of Callus and either buying tributes or earning tributes via Triumphs um, or using the boons is creative. The problem is it still kind of time gates players out in a sense. I, unfortunately, it's going to be the ca more casual players who battle this. They, if they're not able to play as much as some others, they might not have the resources to go and purchase all of the tributes needed to get the gun immediately, which means either they are going to completely wipe themselves out and still not have enough to get everything, or they're just not going to have enough to get anything, and they're going to have to be patient to do the daily boons to get up to a discount to where they can afford to buy the tributes if they don't want to go and complete them all in the triumphs. Is this a bad way about going about it? No, but it kind of hamstrings Bungie's desire, at least I think, to give this as a low barrier to entry exotic weapon. If you come in and say, hey, here everybody, here is a weapon that anyone can have, you just gotta go and buy it, it kind of almost feels like a pay to win. Not really, it's not exactly a pay to win, but the point is, 
if you do this as Bungie, I think you're kind of undercutting yourself as trying to give me a hand me out exotic. So what's the fix to this? Well, I don't think they need to change any of the systems. In fact, I really love the tribute hall and the system of doing tributes to buy the right to go do the quest to get the gun isn't a bad idea. I would just either make the tributes a little less expensive or increase the amount of percent off you get for every boot you complete. I think either way would be a fine compromise and it wouldn't make Guardians totally poor. I know my Titan's in the poorhouse big time. We need to have somewhere on the tower some financial planning classes offered so we can go learn how to better steward our resources that we collect as we're running around the game, right? We need this. But I digress a little bit. The purpose of an exotic hand me out quest is to give something to players, casual or hardcore, that everybody can enjoy and go get and be excited about and bring people to Destiny in some new, fresh, and exciting ways. The problem is if you offer something that's a bit of an artificial barrier to entry within something that is by definition kind of already a low barrier to entry, Again, you kind of hamstring yourself. Again, I think either making the tributes just a little bit less expensive or increasing the percent discount that the boons give you would be a nice middle ground if Bungie were to do something like this again. I, again, I don't think that this was a bad delivery of the gun. I just think you'd use a little bit of fine tuning. But let me know what you think. In the comments below, let me know if you think that this was a good way to bring the bad juju back into Destiny. Do you like this gun? Did you use it in Destiny 1? I would love to know that. And let me know how does it feel compared to Destiny 1 now to Destiny 2. Again, folks, if you enjoyed this video, I really encourage you to come give me a follow on Twitter and Twitch. I'm constantly tweeting on Twitter about anything game related. A lot of that is Destiny. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday by 9 p.m. Eastern. Would love to invite you to come and interact with me and hang out. We can chat about this as well as other things that are happening in Destiny 2. Would also love to invite you to give our podcast a listen. Link to that is below. The Fair and Balanced Play podcast with me and some buddies. Talk about anything happening in the gaming industry and would love to get you involved in those conversations with us as well. If you liked this video, well, a like and a subscription would help me immensely. But regardless of what you choose to do, I hope you choose to join your life today and that you take that joy and you go give it to the next person you interact with. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.